Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film. Human Centipede, Part 2, Full Sequence. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a surveillance security guard watching the film Human Centipede First Sequence inside a surveillance room. The guard's name is Martin. Martin is a psychiatrically and intellectually impaired person with asthma. In addition, he is obsessed with the movie of Human Centipede, in which three victims are depicted suffering. He intends to repeat the gut-wrenching process of constructing a human centipede, but this time, Martin aims to do it using 12 individuals. After that, Martin spots a couple walking in the parking lot on the surveillance monitor. As he notices the couple arguing, Martin quickly grabs the crowbar and heads out of the surveillance room. He then confronts the arguing couple. He gazes into their faces, as if he has something to say. The man tries to push him away, but Martin seems unfazed by his presence. Suddenly, Martin shoots his foot and strikes his head, making him lose consciousness. After this, Martin shoots the girl's legs, which immediately makes her fall to her knees. The girl tries to beg Martin not to kill her, but Martin just smiles deliriously and hits her head with a crowbar. Following the event, Martin decides to clean up the mess he made. He ties up the couple's hands on their backs, using duct tape to make sure that they won't have the chance to escape. After that, Martin puts them at the back of his van and returns to the surveillance room as if nothing happened. Inside the surveillance room, Martin rewinds the film Human Centipede to watch it again. He then brings out an album containing all the information about the people from the Human Centipede film. After some time, Martin spots another man in a suit, mumbling because the ATM he's using seems to be not working. By now, Martin has three captives in his hands, which consists of the couple and the man in a suit. On a rainy day, Martin heads out to meet a warehouse dealer using his van, which still contains the body of his three captives. When he gets there, the dealer of the warehouse says that there are many people who are interested in that place, and all are ready to pay in cash. Martin takes an interest in that place, so he looks around and realizes that it suits his plans, which makes him feel fulfilled. The dealer immediately asks him to have the deal signed, but Martin just looks at him and doesn't speak. Suddenly, after the thunder roars and with a flicker of light, the man is now lying dead with a wound on his stomach. Martin tries to revive the dealer, but it seems that there's no hope for the dealer's lying corpse, so he has no other choice but to wrap up the dead body in plastic. After that, Martin goes out of the warehouse and uses his inhaler to relieve himself from coughing and wheezing. After some time, Martin comes back to the warehouse to check up on his now four captives. He then strips them naked in preparation for his plans. He then calls the USA Actors Management to lure the three actors from the Human Centipede film. But only Ashlyn Yenny gets lured. Inside their house, Martin is lying on his bed as he perceives some words in his mind. Suddenly, his mentally and verbally abusive mother comes in to wake him up. She notifies Martin that Martin's doctor is waiting for him. But before suiting himself up, Martin brings out a scrapbook that's full of details from the Human Centipede film. In the living room, the doctor watches Martin as he feeds his pet centipede in delight. He asks Martin to come and sit behind him so that they can discuss Martin's current condition. The doctor says that he is called by Martin's mother because she is worried about Martin. She claims that Martin keeps on talking about a centipede of 12 people. The doctor describes his insights about Martin's way of thinking and somehow connects them to Martin's dark past of experiencing abuse and trauma at the hands of his father. While eating dinner, loud thumping bass music irritates the mother. So she batters the ceiling with a broom to notify the neighbor above them that his music is too loud. After a moment, their neighbor comes down to confront Martin and his mother. In front of their frightening neighbor, the mother cannot do anything but blame all of it on Martin. As furious as he is, the neighbor threatens Martin that the next time they batter the ceiling, he will break his neck. Inside the surveillance room, Martin is analyzing and reviewing the process of making a human centipede from its film and taking notes in preparation for his plans. Suddenly, he notices a pregnant woman with his husband and baby walking by the parking lot. He then prepares his gun. He waits for them to come inside their car before making his move. Martin hides behind a post and waits for the car to come his way. He then shoots the car twice, shattering the windshield and inflicting injury to the man driving it. The man eventually comes out of the car while in pain. Martin gets his head to make him lose consciousness. After some time, Martin also successfully captures the pregnant woman, making her Martin's sixth captive for his plan. In the surveillance room, Martin re-watches the film again, obsessive like a jerk. Meanwhile, two young drunk women are passing by the parking lot. Martin seems to spot the two by the monitor and cameras, and he finds his new targets. After lining up his eight captives inside the warehouse, Martin comes home to take a rest. 
When he turns on the light in his room, he finds out that his mother is trying to kill him by stabbing him relentlessly. But even so, unvexed Martin doesn't pay much attention and just lies down on his bed. Suddenly, his mother brings out his human centipede scrapbook hidden under his bed. She starts criticizing Martin and his horrendous ideas of making a human centipede. As furious as she is, the mother tears off every page of the scrapbook before leaving Martin weeping in tears in his room. In the living room, Martin cannot help himself from crying as his heart grieves at what his mother did. He can just stare at his centipede as he realizes that his mother shattered his dream. Suddenly, his mother comes in, telling Martin that she wants all of his filth out of the house. Martin cannot take it anymore, so he grabs his mother by her head and brings it close to the centipede. The centipede bites her face, making her fall down and scream in excruciating pain. Martin then grabs his crowbar and smashes her head intensely, completely busting her skull open. Martin brings his mother's dead body and proceeds to the dining room. He grabs the broom and batters the ceiling again to annoy their neighbor, so that he will come down to confront them again. When the neighbor is about to confront them again, he sees his mother's bashed skull. In a moment of awe, Martin grabs the chance to shoot the neighbor on his thigh and hits his head with the crowbar, turning him into Martin's ninth captive. After the intense events, Martin grabs some woodworking tools and equipments and puts them in a suitcase. Back to his work, Martin still re-watches the human centipede film. Something caught his attention on the monitor. He observes thoroughly using his magnifying glass, only to find out that somebody is doing exercise inside their car. Inside the car is Martin's doctor with his chubby friend and a street girl. Mr. Chubby seems to be satisfied with the smelly workout. He even praises her for being the good one. The doctor is also having a good time, but suddenly, Martin appears in front of them. Mr. Chubby tries to push Martin away, but he fails to do so. Instead of going away, Martin shoots Mr. Chubby, which causes panic among the three people inside the car. The street girl tries to run away, but unfortunately, Martin shoots her in the leg. On the other hand, after finding out that Martin is the one who shot his company, the doctor calmly tells Martin that what he's doing is wrong and that he can help him if Martin puts the gun down. But even before the doctor finishes what he has to say, Martin shoots him in his intermittent organ and shoots him right in the head. Martin chases the street girl, who tried to run away to the street earlier. The street girl manages to spray anti-hormones in Martin's eyes. Unfortunately, she still falls into Martin's hands before she can go back to her familiar street. Back in the surveillance room, Martin receives a call from Yenny's manager, saying that her flight is not delayed and that she will be landing at London Airport at 6 in the morning. The next morning, Martin comes back to the warehouse with Yenny and his three other captives, which include his neighbor, Mr. Chubby, and the street girl whom he caught in the parking lot. Yenny starts discussing how drawn she is to the human centipede film. When they drop off at the warehouse, Yenny asks for an umbrella, but Martin doesn't pay much attention and just walks towards the warehouse. Upon entering the warehouse, Yenny perceives the moans and screams of other people inside. Even in the middle of the darkness, Yenny discerns suffering people until Martin strikes her head with a crowbar. After Yenny loses consciousness, Martin starts moving to line up the bodies of his 12 naked and tied captives. Everyone shouts, groans, and sobs in fear that their life will end at that moment. Martin looks at his 12 captives and gives them a lunatic gaze before he brings out the tools and equipment. Martin also takes out his notes that he will use as a guide on how he will execute the gruesome act. As a mark of the beginning of his masterpiece, Martin hits every victim's head to make them settle and dizzy so that he can start without distraction. Without any form of anesthesia, Martin starts the tormenting process by removing his neighbor's teeth one by one. After that, Martin finds out that the pregnant woman is not breathing anymore. He tries to wake her up, but there is no response from her, which means she is dead. Martin cannot do anything but sob in sadness as he loses a part of his precious dream. Nevertheless, Martin continues to proceed despite this. He follows exactly what the psycho doctor did in the human centipede film. He begins by marking their kneecaps and knee pits, and then severs the tendons of them to prevent his captives from fleeing. Following what the psycho doctor did, Martin takes the next step by marking and severing several areas of each victim's mouth, cheeks, and buttocks. To form a human centipede similar to the film, Martin attaches one's mouth to someone's buttocks using only a staple gun. And to keep them connected, he uses duct tape to support the attachment between one person and the next. And since Yenny seems to be his star of the centipede, he puts her in the front to serve as a head. After repeating the same process of connecting his victims, Martin successfully constructs his fantasy and perfects the image of a human centipede composed of 11 people. He celebrates his success of making his dream come true by dancing to distorted classical music as he cries in tears.
After his little celebration, Martin tries to feed his human centipede by giving Yenny food, but Yenny resists taking it, which leads Martin to forcefully feed her. He then uses a funnel with a plastic hose tube connected to it and inserts it into her mouth to feed her. In sync with the rumbles of thunder, Martin continues making his captives suffer in the worst way possible. Subsequently, he administers an immoderate amount of laxatives to each of his captives, forcing every one of them to release their bowels and have someone next to them swallow one's discharge. Unknown to Martin, the pregnant woman he thought had died reawakens under a tarp next to another dead body. Even in uncertainty, the pregnant woman rises from the tarp and tries to escape by running outside. Luckily, she gets to get inside the car next to Martin's before he even catches her. Martin doesn't stop and chases after her outside. He even tries to barge himself against the car, hoping he can get in. At that very moment, the pregnant woman goes into labor and gives birth to her child. Right after the engine starts, the woman stomps on the accelerator, smashing her child's skull while she tries to escape. Luckily, the woman successfully escapes Martin's grim plan and is able to drive away. Inside the warehouse, Martin's centipede splits in half after his neighbor detaches himself from the lineup. After witnessing his creation continuously crumbling apart, Martin growls in rage and shoots his captives one by one, killing the other half of the centipede. Yenny manages to turn off the light while Martin wipes out the other half of the centipede. By doing so, Martin has to turn on the light again to see his targets. While Martin turns on the light, Yenny grabs the chance to fight back by throwing the glass enclosure at Martin. Unfortunately, she fails to hit Martin with her only chance. The continuous collapses in his plans make Martin even more enraged, which leaves him no other option but to get rid of them all immediately. After catching up to the remaining half of the centipede, Martin manages to shoot the last guy at the back before his gun runs out of ammo. He then decides to put an end to their lives by slitting their necks using a kitchen knife. When Martin approaches Yenny to put an end to her misery, she punches him in the groan, making him fall to his knees because of the pain. Yenny seizes the opportunity and grabs the funnel that Martin used to force feed her earlier. She then shoves it into Martin. She grabs the wandering centipede on the floor and sticks it inside. Unfortunately, Martin still manages to stand up and stabs Yenny's nape. After killing the last captive, Martin screams in pain as he tries to remove the centipede from inside him. Even though he is lurching because of the pain, Martin manages to get out of the warehouse. The final scene shows Martin in a good state, still watching the human centipede film inside the surveillance room. This implies that he still intends to repeat this just to see his fantasies come to life in success. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.